welcome everyone for this vlsi design lecture series in today's lecture video let us discuss about layout diagrams layout design rules describes how small features can be designed and how closely they can be placed in a particular manufacturing process lambda based design rules are widely used which is based on a single parameter called as lambda and generally this lambda is channel length divided by 2 lambda is equal to l divided by 2 for example if the channel length is 180 nanometer channel length is nothing but the distance between the source and drain of mosfet if it is 180 nanometer then lambda will be 180 by 2 Which is 90 nanometer. So instead of naming each and every design, each and every layer, such as metal layer, diffusion layer, polysilicon layer, in terms of nanometers, in terms of values, generally we represent using lambda. Hence, the name given to this rule set is called as lambda design rule set. let us see the layer representation in layout diagrams n type diffusion is represented by a rectangular box and the pattern of n type diffusion is lines which are tilted towards the right hand side and it is represented by green color polysilicon is represented by a red color with a pattern of lines tilted towards the left hand side p type diffusion is represented by yellow color and the pattern of lines is again tilted towards the right hand side but the spacing between the lines are little bit bigger metal one is represented by blue color and the pattern of that is lines which are placed vertically downwards which are uh, lines are placed vertically metal two is usually represented by a color called as magenta and metal two the pattern it is represented as lines which are placed horizontally so this is how we represent layers in layout diagrams the major difference between stick diagram and layout diagram is in stick diagram we will not concentrate upon rules we don't have any set of rules for stick diagram in this free way of writing the design whereas layout diagrams have set of rules called as lambda based rules the width and the distance between the two layers should be this much like that a different set of rules will be there so those rules are not there for stick diagrams but as rules are there for drawing layout diagrams so now let us see those rules some basic rules to draw layout diagrams minimum width and minimum separation of layers p type diffusion and n type diffusion are represented by yellow color and green color respect respectively p type diffusion should have a minimum width of 4 lambda and n type diffusion should have a minimum width of 4 lambda as well and the distance between the two diffusions whether it might be p type diffusion or it might be n type diffusion the minimum separation of that should be 4 lambda if you observe this particular diagram which is shown on the screen the distance minimum separation between two p type diffusions is 4 lambda minimum separation between two n type diffusion is again 4 lambda similarly we have a, a kind of layer called as polysilicon layer which is usually the gate material the minimum width of polysilicon should be 2 lambda and the distance between two polysilicon layers if it is placed close by the minimum separation between two polysilicon layers should definitely be 3 lambda and the distance between or the minimum separation between the polysilicon layer and diffusion whether it might be p type diffusion or it might be n type diffusion the minimum separation between polysilicon and the diffusion should be 1 lambda 
this is the minimum separation and minimum width which we are focusing upon the separation as well as the width can be greater than this particular representation which we have shown but it should never be less if it is less there can be interconnection problems if it is greater there can be area related problems so it's better to represent all the layers using these lambda design tools similarly there is one more layer called as metal the minimum width of metal layer should be 4 lambda and the minimum distance of separation between the two metal layers should again be 4 lambda metal and diffusion should have a minimum width and spacing of 4 lambda whenever two different layers are meeting at a point and there has to be an electrical connection between those two different layers we definitely have to employ contacts contacts are 2 lambda cross 2 lambda and they must be surrounded by 1 lambda on the layers above and below whichever we layers we are using as shown in this particular diagram if you observe the contact has a width of 2 lambda and the length of 2 lambda it is surrounded by n type diffusion with a minimum width of 1 lambda on either side n well surrounds p mos transistor by 6 lambda and avoids n mos transistor by 6 lambda as shown in this particular diagram so if you observe pull up network is formed using p mos transistor and pull down network is formed using n mos transistor we already know that and we already are familiar how to represent p mos transistor and n mos transistor as well a p mos transistor is formed when p type diffusion is crossed by polysilicon n mos transistor is formed when n type diffusion is crossed by polysilicon the minimum distance between n mos transistor and this n well should be 6 lambda and this particular p mos transistor should be placed in a rectangular box or rectangular square uh, rectangular area where n well transistor or n well uh, material is used so this n well should surround this p mos transistor by 6 lambda on all the sides now let us see how the transistors are formed and how transistor design rules have to be taken care as we have already discussed we have two kinds of mosfets p channel mosfet and n channel mosfet a p mos transistor is formed when p type diffusion is crossed by polysilicon the minimum width of this p type diffusion should be 4 lambda and the minimum width of this polysilicon should be 2 lambda similarly n mos transistor is formed when n type diffusion is crossed by polysilicon n mos the width of this n diffusion width of this n diffusion is 4 lambda and the width of this polysilicon should be 2 lambda when n type diffusion crosses polysilicon we get n mos transistor the width of this n diffusion should be 4 lambda and the width of this polysilicon layer should be 2 lambda so this is how we represent transistor p mos transistor and n mos transistor using layout diagrams if we just compare the representation of p mos transistor and n mos transistor with respect to layout diagram and stick diagram in stick diagram we didn't have this 2 lambda 4 lambda those kind of rules were not there the minimum width and minimum separation was not there whereas in layout diagrams when we are drawing layout diagrams those lambda based rules have to be considered so let us see an example of inverter let us try to draw a layout diagram for inverter by using lambda based design rules we are already are familiar with the circuit diagram of inverter which consists of p mos transistor and n mos transistor gate of p mos is connected to gate of n mos which is given as input source of p mos is connected to bdd source of n mos is connected to ground drain of p mos is connected to drain of n mos which in turn is connected as output bdd and ground are logic level high and logic level low inputs though which are represented by metal layers 
VDD and ground are represented by metal frames. As we have already discussed the pattern for the metal, the pattern for the metal one is lines which are placed vertically like this. Sufficient gap is given between VDD and ground. PMOS transistor is formed by P-type diffusion. So this P-type diffusion is taken in the pull-up side and we have NMOS transistor which has to be represented below PMOS and we have considered N-type diffusion. And these diffusions, the width of this should be four lambda. PMOS transistor is formed when P-type diffusion cross, is crossed by polysilicon. NMOS transistor is formed when N-type diffusion is crossed by polysilicon. Now let us see the terminals. As per the circuit diagram, we have written the terminals for layout diagrams as well. But when we are drawing layout diagrams, it is not essential that we have to represent these terminals. For understanding purpose, I have just represented. Gate terminal, source, drain for PMOS. Gate, source and drain for NMOS. With respect to the circuit diagram, gate terminal of PMOS is connected to gate terminal of NMOS, which in turn is connected as input. Source of this PMOS is connected to VDD. Source of PMOS is connected to VDD by making use of a metal layer. Drain of PMOS is connected to drain of NMOS, which in turn is connected as output. Drain of PMOS is connected to drain of NMOS which in turn is connected as output. Next. Source of NMOS is connected to ground. Source of NMOS is connected to ground by means of metal layer. Next. Gate terminal of PMOS transistor is connected to gate terminal of NMOS, which in turn is connected to input. Gate terminal of PMOS is connected to gate terminal of NMOS, which in turn is connected as input. Now, whenever two different layers are meeting in a layout diagram or in stick diagram, we have to establish a contact. And the minimum width as well as length of that contact should be two lambda cross two lambda. We already have seen that in our layout design rules. Whenever two different layers are meeting at a point and there has to be an electrical connection between those two layers, we should definitely establish a contact which is also called as VIA. VIA. Metal terminal and P-type diffusion, electrical connection has to be formed. So we have established a contact. Diffusion, metal, we have established a contact. N-type diffusion, metal, we have established a contact. Similarly, we have N-type diffusion here and metal over here. So there has to be electrical connection between those two. Hence, we have established a contact. This is how we represent layout of a simple CMOS inverter. I hope that you have understood how to draw layout diagram of CMOS inverter. Thank you.